All righty. Um, so we have a bit of an update video today. It's a little less exciting than I was expecting. I'm really glad I did my research on the company that's on site. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll start off the video. I, I said it on Instagram, I'd be talking about something. I'm going to say that for a little bit at the end of the video, just in case there's new viewers here. So they're not confused that I'm randomly just sharing stuff about my life or like, um, opening up a little more, but yeah, nonetheless, let's get right into it. Um, it's a little bit of a, um, I guess a shitty situation, I guess we could say about these blue trucks that appeared in a video, um, up ahead, but yes, these blue trucks are just sanitation trucks. Um, they're just there, uh, for cleaning purposes, um, and nothing more. Um, but the exciting news is work continues on Mindbuster and other prep of the ride. So Yukon Striker even is getting closer to prep. So those gates that have been open all winter and the beginning part of this summer are finally closed. Um, and they got a wood plank over the station. So they're prepping their B&Ms. Um, again, Wonderland does a lot of their ride testing Saturdays and Sundays, um, from 10 a.m. to about 3 or 4 p.m. if it's like last year as they were getting ready. Um, so if you really want to see rides testing, go Saturday, Sunday uh, between 10 and 4 p.m. Obviously, stay off property. Do not enter the parking lot. Security will stop you. Um, it is just uh, for your safety and the park's safety that everyone stay off property. Um, so please, I can't clarify enough. Stay off property. Um, as you may know, I also want to touch on something. Um even the park thought uh, we were maybe on property with our recent flight deck footage. Um, I was actually on the grass hill. I have a new camera. I have a, a new Canon M50 Mark II uh, with a 200 zoom lens. So I'm able to zoom in a lot better and it's a lot crisper than my previous camera. Also uh, with the drone, you may notice a lot of these closer shots um, we also had some drone shots of a uh, flight deck where it looked like we're a lot closer. I've learned the uh, how to edit footage a little better. So I've been doing my research because I'm not the editor. Um, for example, someone like Tyler Kochi in the coaster community is an excellent editor and amazing at photography. Just a little shout out there. Um, but me, I'm not so good at editing. Um, and uh, I've been trying to learn a little more. I've learned cropping 4K footage actually allows you to zoom in and it doesn't distort the image quality as much. So when I crop, for example, I've done it a couple times here, um, I'm able to show you guys a much closer shot. Um, it distorts it a little bit. It brings 4K down to 1080p or 720. But if I zoom in on editing or even screenshot and zoom in, it actually distorts it a lot more than this. So all I'm doing is cropping a shot. Um, usually in my editing software, I just take the corners and crop it in, zoom it in. Um, and it gives you a much uh, closer look. Um, and you can always tell the difference by the surrounding area. So as you can tell here, you can definitely tell it's a lot more cropped compared to something like this, the 4K shot. So if you see any image distortion, I'm just cropping the image to zoom in. I'm not flying over the park, I promise. I would never do that. Um, I would never risk my reputation with Canada's Wonderland. Um, and it's just Again, out of respect for people working there, drones are uh, extremely safe, especially the one I have. It has obstacle avoidance. It won't let me get near anything, especially a lot of metal. So let's say I even tried to bring my drone into the park and I flew over Behemoth. That thing's going to be so um, glitchy and it's going to give me a lot of airs. Um, if it goes any, like I've even tried to fly over a metal bridge once. Uh, and it just gives you a lot of metal ear, uh, airs. If I go near another drone, it gives me airs. So... Um, it's just not something that I would ever do. But also if one of these things ever does have a problem and it falls out of the sky, let's say I was flying over Kingswood tent and that thing flew out of the sky, I'm going to tear the tent. And that's a lot of property damage for Canada's Wonderland. Um, or if it were to hit a worker um, or a guest, if the park was open or hit someone's windshield from like 300 feet in the air, it's going to do a lot of damage. So Trust me, um, anyone who's seen me fly my drone, uh, especially Cole, I don't even like flying over water. I get really nervous. I get really scared. I remember one time I was trying to film an abandoned theme park um, and I was flying over the lake and it was just, I couldn't do it. Uh, I just get really anxious because of my anxiety. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I just wanted to put that in there because uh, again, I know a lot of people are seeing closer shots. It's just, I've upgraded my camera equipment. We do have a new drone. It's the new DG. DJI uh, 2 Zoom. Um, we've had it for a while, but I'm learning how to edit better. <laughs> so I'll take it as a compliment that people thought I was in the park. Um, and uh, yeah, nonetheless, let's move past that. So uh, the park is prepping to open for those of you that may be new viewers. Um, a lot, I got a lot of questions in DMs and the comment section below. So a lot of people are like, 
Um, when is the reservation system going to launch? I wouldn't expect the reservation system to launch any time soon. Again, wait for Wonderland to make official announcements. Sometimes I know my stuff and sometimes I don't know my stuff. Sometimes I make predictions and they're wrong. Sometimes I make predictions and they're right. And a lot of times I do take what's going on at other Cedar Fair parks and implement it into my predictions on what's going to happen. Um, I am trying to be a lot smarter with my predictions and a lot more careful when I say things, um, just because I don't want to lead people astray. Uh, I would expect Canada's Wonderland to launch their reservation system maybe three to seven days before opening at best. Um, and uh, yeah, it will be a first come first serve. And unfortunately, it's not the park's fault that they are limited attendance. Uh, so please don't take any frustration with the reservation system out on them. Um, until they're allowed more guests, that's all they can do in order to open and be able to make any sort of money. So please do not be angry at the park for having a reservation system. It's what they have to do to open. Um, it will be frustrating. It will be difficult. So just prepare yourself mentally for that. Um, and you won't be able to go daily. Uh, if I'm to also make a prediction, you can't book multiple days. You have to go to your first reservation before you can even reserve again. So there probably will be times where you're not able to go every day of the weekend or go every day, maybe every other day. That is also depending on how many Ontarians and Canadians actually do want to go to the park. Again, we don't know the trends and the statistics yet, but it is looking like Canadians are really frustrated and want to go out and do something. So that could be good news for a park like Canada's Wonderland. Breathe. <laughs> I feel like Trisha paid us right now. I'm just running my mouth. Um, nonetheless, I think that's all. Again, the park's prepping. Um, if you want to watch the rides off property, uh, Saturday, Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, if it's like last year, I can't guarantee that. Can't promise that's actually going to be the case. Um, and yeah, get those season passes and tickets purchased because the park is going to open. A lot of people still think it's not. I even get a lot of Americans that are like, it's not going to open the Canadian government. It's very different from last year. Uh, we are the park theme parks are actually listed on the stage two opening and Canadians are actually leading the world in terms of first dose vaccination numbers and those second doses are getting out. So there is nothing getting in our way in terms of opening. Um, and I don't see anything stopping that um, quite yet. And I don't see Canadians and Ontarians putting up with another lockdown or any further restrictions. We are quite at our wits end in terms of dealing with this uh, world's longest lockdown. <laughs> but yeah, nonetheless, I'll stay away from that topic. I wanted to take some time to honestly thank you guys. Um, I'm not very open about my life a lot of the times. Um, and some of you have been here from the beginning. Um, and uh, some of you are newer. And recently, the channel has been getting a lot of really, like, really nice positive comments um, and just interactions, even on Instagram. And it honestly means the world to me. Um, for those of you that don't know or couldn't tell, I am an extremely fragile human being. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty and I have a lot more in common um, <laughs> physically and emotionally, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I am really fragile and sometimes I do allow my mind to think negatively and just fill itself up with negative thoughts and uh, I just get put into a really negative place. And just recently, I've just noticed I've been coming out of that and I feel really good and just like the channels, comments and interactions have been really positive lately. And I just want to thank you guys because you're a huge part of um, in me fighting my mental health and my anxiety. And it's just like, it means the world to me. It really does. And I just really wanted to take some time to thank you guys. Cause I don't think I show appreciation enough. And to be honest, like this channel and you guys are a huge part of my life now. And it's just, it gives me a lot of fighting reason, um, to wake up in the morning and be happy and thankful for something that I have in my life. So I really just wanted to take some time um, to thank you guys. Um, there's things that have happened to me in my life that make it really difficult for me to trust people um, and just make it really difficult to be happy. And eventually I will share more about my life, but I just wanted to honestly thank you guys because you are a huge part of, um, you know, <laughs> me being in a better mindset. Um, and I just wanted to, yeah, I really just wanted to say something because I feel like a lot of people don't understand me fully and 
for good reason. I'm, I'm, a, I'm not an open book. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching my channel and being super positive. And this is going to be a really good year. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.